Hi, my name is David A. Wheeler, and I'm here today to talk about readable Lisp S expressions, curly infix, neoteric, and sweet expressions. Here's an outline of my talk. In this presentation, I'm going to presume that you already know the basics about some Lisp based language, such as Scheme, Common Lisp, or Emacs Lisp. So, what's the problem? Lisp's traditional S expression notation is simple, it is clear, it is regular, but it is also very awkward. Here is a trivial example. Notice there is no support for infix. It uses a completely non-standard call format, and it simply uses too many parentheses. It's not just me. Many people find traditional S expressions awkward. Paul Graham, a Lisp advocate, says, I have used Lisp my whole programming life, and I still don't find prefix math expressions natural. And indeed, the jargon file refers to Lisp as lots of irritating superfluous parentheses. So what are the requirements for a Lisp notation? Any Lisp notation must be at least general and homoiconic. General means it needs to be useful regardless of the underlying semantic. A Lisp can manipulate symbol sets for many purposes, create whole new programming constructs, so you need to be able to use it regardless of the underlying semantic. It also needs to be homo-iconic. The service syntax has to clearly present the underlying data structure, and that's necessary so that you can understand and debug processing of structures. Sadly, past readable notations weren't general or homo-iconic, and that includes the original M expression notation which is why these past readable efforts have failed. It really just wasn't obvious that these were requirements. But now that we know that these are requirements, I think we can do a lot better. And ideally, the notation should also be backwards compatible. There's a lot of material out there in traditional Lisp notation. We should be able to use it if we have it. Now, we could just ignore the problem, but readability matters. As Paul Graham has observed, when you program, you spend more time reading code than writing it. So a language that makes source code ugly is maddening. Now there have been successes in making Lisp easier to read, and these involve abbreviations. For over 50 years, Lisp has had abbreviations. TickX actually means the list quotex, and the list ABC actually means a much more complex expression. It does take time to learn and implement abbreviations, but if a construct is common, it can be worth learning, especially if it can work across various Lisps. I founded the Readable Project with the idea of creating more readable Lisp expressions, and our approach has been to create new abbreviations. That means that normally formatted S expressions just keep working. We've developed three new expression tiers curly infix, neoteric, and sweet expressions. Curly infix adds infix notation, but in a lispy way. Neoteric expressions add normal function notation. And sweet expressions deduce parentheses from indentation, reducing the need for parentheses. You can update your reader to support these, and they are general, homo-iconic, and backwards compatible. So let's talk about curly infix expressions, aka C expressions. Curly infix expressions are just S expressions with one new concept, curly infix lists contained in curly braces. A simple infix list is simply a curly infix list that represents one operation in infix order. In general, it looks like open curly brace, A, op B, op C, and so on. And this is just another way to write open paren op abc. For example, curly brace 5 plus 6 plus 7, close curly, is just another way of writing open paren plus 5, 6, 7. You have to have at least three parameters, an odd number of parameters, and all even parameters equal. And that's simple because that's how you write one operation in fixed order. An empty curly infix list is just the empty list. A single datum inside is that datum, and two datums are that pair of datums in that order. Otherwise, it maps to the list $infix$, and then the rest of the parameters. 
This is completely homoiconic. There's no built-in precedence by intent, but that's not a problem. You can use another curly and fixed list to create an embedded list or define and process dollar and fixed dollar. There are two variations of C, and fix, of C expressions. One is just basic, all the elements are more C expressions, and the full version where elements are neoteric expressions, which I'll describe a little later. So let's look at some examples. Open curly n less than or equal to 2 is just another way to write open paren less than or equal to n2. Multiple operands are no problem. Open curly 2 star 3 star 4 is just another way to write the list star 2 3 4. There's no built-in precedence. That's not a problem. Just use another list. Open curly 2 plus open curly 3 star 4 close close means, well, exactly what you think it would mean. You can use mixed operators. That will insert the dollar and fixed dollar for possible later processing. So why isn't precedence processing built in? Well, lisps are often used to process arbitrary symbols and rule sets. A fixed precedent system would be too inflexible, and registration systems are, frankly, too error-prone. Often there's no single set of precedences for a given program. We've also found that programmers don't understand or use precedence all this much. So the curly and fix approach is different. It's more flexible and it's simpler. You can have many different precedent systems if you need it and it's easy to use even if you don't. And this approach is completely homoiconic, easing debugging. Now let's talk about neoteric expressions, aka n expressions. These include curly and fix and they add traditional call notation. If you simply say datum followed immediately by an open paren, that's just another way of writing open paren that datum followed by something else. E open curly brace curly bra close curly brace all by itself is just that item in the list. Otherwise, those items are considered a single parameter in infix order. E open bracket curly bracket adds bracket apply and an unprefix dot e just represents itself. Now, technically, this changes S expression syntax, but in practice, normal S expressions are completely untouched. In the extremely rare cases where they are touched, a printing pr printer can easily fix them. So, for example, F open paren 1 space 2 close paren is another way of writing open paren F12. Exit open paren close paren is another way of writing open paren exit close paren. F open curly n minus 1 close curly is another way of writing open paren f of the expression curly n minus 1 close curly. And finally we have sweet expressions aka t expressions. These include neoteric expressions but they also deduce parentheses from indentation. A line has zero more n expressions separated by one or more spaces or tabs. If a line has more indentation, that line is a child of its parent. A line with only one n expression and new child lines represents itself. Otherwise, that list of n expressions is wrapped into a list. An empty line ends the whole expression and there's no indentation processing inside parens, square brackets, and curly braces. This makes it very backwards compatible and this whole set of rules eliminates the lots of irritating superfluous parentheses problem. Here's a simple example of a sweet expression. Notice how clean it looks. In particular, finally, we have infix. We have traditional function call notation. Indentation implies parentheses, and we can have simple parentheses-free calls in many cases. All of this, of course, translates to a more traditional S expression. And in fact, a sweet expression reader would accept either the format on the left or the right. This backwards compatibility greatly eases transition. Here's another example of a sweet expression, in this case of a factorial function. Notice that we have a number of uses of infix, which then can be translated by a sweet expression reader into the S expression form on the right. Here's another example. 
This one defines a function long and boring. If it's not a pair, it returns false. If it's not a list, it returns false. If the length is less than the boring length, it returns false. Otherwise, it returns whatever boring returns. And this easily translates to the S expression below. Here's yet another example. Notice in this case, if x is a pair, it will then execute a much more complicated instruction, and all of this is quite obvious from the indentation. So let's do a quick recap here. First of all, let's look at traditional S expressions, lots of parentheses. Curly infix expressions allow us to express infix notation a little more naturally. Neoteric expressions let us move parentheses to a different, more common position. And sweet expressions allow us to eliminate a lot of the parentheses in the first place and use indentation instead. Let's clarify a few things about sweet expressions. First of all, a line that only contains a semicolon comment is completely ignored. Even its indentation is irrelevant. And these are useful to, for example, separate lines without ending a whole expression. Indents can be one or more spaces, tabs, or bangs, the exclamation point character. A line with only zero more spaces and tabs is considered an empty line, since in many situations you can't see the difference. And if an in expression starts indented, then indentation processing is disabled, and each name is considered separately. Now, using the bang as an indent character is a little surprising but it solves a lot of past problems that people have had with indentation-sensitive syntaxes, and it also enables highlighting. And finally, empty lines before an expression starts are just ignored. Now let's talk about some advanced sweet expression capabilities. Programs have been written using sweet expressions, and in the process we've identified some recurring patterns. And so we've also created some abbreviations to simplify those common cases. A backslash backslash after an indent is called group, and it represents no symbol at all. This is useful for expressing lists of lists, such as for let star variables. A backslash backslash between datums is called split, and it basically starts a new line at the current indentation. The dollar, aka sublist, is inspired by the Haskell operator. It just means that the right-hand side, including any subblocks, is the last parameter of that line's left-hand side. If there is no left-hand side, it puts the whole right-hand side in the list. A leading abbreviation, or sharp semicolon, followed by white space, applies to the following T expression. And finally, less than star, followed later by star greater than, surrounds a collecting list. A collecting list creates a new list, but instead of disabling indentation processing, it restarts the indentation at the beginning, the left-hand edge, and indentation process continues. It does not end on an empty line, and these are really useful for let expressions and module definitions. Here are some of the tools available. Unsweeten translates sweet expressions into S expressions. Sweeten will translate S expressions into sweet expressions. These and other tools are all available as free Libre open source software using the MIT license. A common Lisp library called Readable is also available and directly implements all these tiers. It's portable and again available using the MIT license. You can enable it by simply beginning each file inserting these three lines and then disable at the end of the file. Scheme has an informal standardization approach called Surfy's Scheme Requests for Implementation. In this system, Surfy 105, it defines curly infix expressions and also neoteric expressions. Surfy 110 defines sweet expressions for Scheme. So in conclusion, these readable notations make Lisp source code easier to read, easier to understand. There are three tiers, curly infix expressions, which add infix, neoteric expressions, which add a more traditional functional call notation, and sweet expressions, which figure out a lot of the parentheses from indentation. More information and implementation is available at the Readable project, readable.sourceforge.net. Thank you very much.